for a guy I truly believe you can't date or you should not really date if you're not financially stable. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford to do basic activities mm -hmm. because now what we're both supposed to stay home because you can't afford it. I think a lot of people here, you know, think I'm very materialistic and like I set my standards up where I'm like, I'm not going to date a broke guy and I only want to date a rich guy. And I think it all it always comes back to the idea of, you know, broke guys at the end of the day, they're always angry that they're broke. They're always mad about something and that 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 trickles down into the relationship. It's not even just about like not doing the dinner or not doing the activity. It's like they're even mad about it. They have like some kind of insecurity about it. And and that I don't need amongst all the other issues that come with being in a regular relationship. Chemical X. Hey guys, welcome back to the Chemical X podcast. I'm Alessia. I'm Veronica. And don't forget to do your daily homework. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and leave us five stars on Apple Podcasts. So today is another day, another episode. Alessia and I are both matching. We're both manifesting our Europe trips that are coming this week. Woo! So this is the last episode that's going to be filmed before we leave on our trip. So by the time we come back, we are going to have some juicy, juicy stories yes. for you. So we're filming this a little bit in advance. So just so you guys know, the week of the 23rd, there will be no episode. And also for all the support that we are going to get on the Sergio episode. <laughs> Thank you so much, even though it hasn't come in yet. <laughs> 100%. Manifesting that it will come in, and thank you so much. <laughs> um, also, guys, just another thing. We are also on Snapchat, so we sometimes post some exclusive content on there and little clips. So if you want to check us out, it's Chemical X Podcast. You search it on your Snapchat Discover page and give us a follow. So... Alessia's already texting, so already we know we're lo we lost her for this episode. <laughs> so hopefully it's only uphill from uphill from here. So we wanted to make an episode on, you know, the amazing parts about being single and the things you should focus on while being single and why being single is really not as bad as you think. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of stages you go through when you're single you know there's like that fresh single there's like once you start getting used to it mm -hmm. then it's like you know three years down the line there's so many different stages of being single and i'm sure people listening are like you know kind of plugging themselves into what stage they're at yeah and as you guys know because you're obviously followers of the podcast i am at stage zero <laughs> so we are right at the beginning of being single you're actually at like stage one stage one zero would mean like you didn't you didn't break up okay <laughs> she always has to come in with like well no don't it's it's a it's like a stage one you're like at the beginning one. stage yeah i would say i'm at like stage three maybe four okay. i mean how many stages is there i feel like there's like six and like six is in a relationship i'm making all these rules what up the fuck? i'm yeah. making all these rules up right now i feel like i'm at stage four you're at stage one maybe going on two even i mean First of all, it's so funny because people come up to me all the time and they'll be like, so what's it like being single? And, you know, for everyone, when you get shot that question, it's different for everyone because depending how the relationship ended, you know, depending why, there's so many different responses you can get. And I feel like for me, because of the way my relationship ended, mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like if it ended in a bad way, you're more like, yeah, fuck, I'm back to the streets. The streets are calling. Whereas for me, I'm like, listen, this isn't what I planned. I didn't plan to be single. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not jumping for joy. But I will say that I ha I am and I always have been somebody who truly enjoys being single. There's pros and cons to both. It's nice to be in a relationship and there's a lot of nice things that happen when you are in a relationship. But I really do love being single. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes there can be a lot of stigma if you've been like single for a while where like people will come up and be like, so like, have you met anyone? And it's like, you know, people don't realize, but the time of being single, we'll talk about the stages of it. But, you know, it, it's about like finding yourself really and doing what you enjoy doing. So it's not necessarily like, oh, well, I'm three years, I'm single. Like, why haven't I met anyone? You know, like you're doing the work. Yeah. And I also think that there's different. I've been in relationships and single out of relationships 
multiple times. And I think each time has been a different experience. Mm -hmm. And I think the things that I found out about myself have not been the same. So even though I'm at the place now where I know who I am, I know what I want, I know where I'm going, and I'm not finding myself in that sense of, you know, the word life, I think in certain areas, it's unlocked certain things for me. And I am finding myself, quote unquote, in other areas. So I feel like a lot of people can feel like they're at this point in their life, especially when you're older, you know, like I'm 25, like I know what I'm doing. And I felt like this was the relationship that I was going to be in forever. So I was really set up to not be single again. Like I knew what I wanted. So I feel like people getting out of a relationship like that, you're like, well, I, I don't need to do any more work. Like I was ready for, you know, like I know who I am. I know what I want. I'm, I'm ready. I'm yeah. secure. But I still think that there's always something to learn. And I still think that every situation that you're in, you're in it for a reason. And there's always something to learn, to grow, to be better at. So it's all about taking every opportunity and single is an opportunity in itself. Single is the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if you have a boyfriend who's open minded, who allows you to do everything. When you are single, you have the ability to take a flight that day and be like, what is the less you want? Mm -hmm. I'm going. There's there's a lot more you know, what do I want? What do I need? What will make me happy? It's always, you're, you're selfish in the sense where you only have to think about yourself. Yeah. And just that alone should not be a reason why single is frowned upon. Frowned upon. (laughs) Well, you can't speak, but I can't breathe. I'm, I'm out of, I'm going, because I can't Your corset corset. is like, (laughs) it's so tight. So let's talk about some of the things that you've, been saying you've learned about yourself being single for one week (laughs) stage one stage one well i right now i've been single for it's fresh single is so weird because you never you're not really single when you're going through a breakup i can't i can't explain it yeah i know there's like the part where you're going through the fresh breakup it's like you're not really single but like technically speaking i think i've been single for about a month and two and a half maybe Mm -hmm. um so still very very fresh and I guess, you know, my mindset is my mindset. It's where it's at. And like I said, everybody gets out of a relationship single in different ways. So I know for you, you had a different experience. You could probably like you can say well, that. Yeah. After. I, yeah. Um, but for me, like I said, my relationship, I really saw it going. This is who I'm with forever. Like I had that. I had my life mapped out for yeah, myself. It was more of like tunnel head. vision. Yeah. Like I really said, this is where I'm going. This is how I see my life, the vision was clear. I knew what I wanted. I knew what my life looked like. I was very happy and comfortable. Like I, I was very happy, you know, in the relationship. So getting out of it, I feel like I'm just kind of like erasing the vision that I had. And I'm starting with like a clean slate. And I'm like, okay, there's so many things that I haven't even thought about that could be an opportunity that now they could be. Like Um, for what? We want to give examples. Just in general, I think being single, there's so much opportunity, whether it's in dating, whether it's in life, in career. I think just the idea that you have no commitments, Mm -hmm. the opportunity is endless. And I think when you are with somebody, like I said, you map out your life in a certain way where you kind of like cancel out the opportunity. Like, you know, just for example, it's like you're, you're dating a guy. He's a businessman you know that your life is going to go a certain way. When you get out of a relationship, obviously whoever you're dating, your partner has a big impact on what your life looks like. So it's like, let's say you're out of that relationship. You envisioned your life a certain way. Now you go and you date an athlete. Suddenly you're flying to different cities. You're living somewhere else. Your life looks completely different Mm -hmm. than what you had initially fantasized and envisioned for yourself. And that, you know, that middle part between those two things is where you start seeing, wow, like, The sky's the limit. I could be anything. I could be anyone. My life could go in any direction at any point. Not necessarily based off who you're dating, Mm -hmm. but it's just you no longer have that like tunnel vision of this is what my life is. Yeah. You know, you suddenly feel like anything's possible. And it's very exciting. That's the thing. It's like you feel like the world is yours and anything is possible. And you just have to ask yourself, is this is this it? Is this what I want? Mm -hmm. It's it's really like it's it's the best. And I remember when you know, we've had different, there's different stages to being single, you know, um, for me, when I became recently single about a year ago, for me, it was just like, it was just like, 
do everything yeah you know but i that trip say yeah i think for i think i did that kind of like single time when i went to australia and i did do everything and i feel like you had that you know what i mean like when you got fresh out it was like that's what i was seeing it was just like what else is out there let me go whereas like i feel like sometimes when you're recently single it's like you either get in the stage where like you're either veronica or you're me where you're like a literally a rabbit without a head you're just like say yes to everything like i'm just gonna go here this guy wants to fly me i want to meet him i want to meet as many people as i can i want to socialize i want to social network i want to see where like my career could take me because i literally have no um i have nothing holding me back yeah so i think i did that and now i'm more at the more like calm like i'm single now Mm because even when i was doing that at the beginning it was like i was single but i was living like just I don't know how to explain it, but just more catching up kind of. Yeah. I just felt like I was catching up and now I can like breathe and be like, I'm uh, yeah, I, I'm single. Like I'm not as, I don't know, like Pressure. rabbit without a head. Yeah. I have more like control. Peace. I didn't have control at the yeah. beginning, which I feel like for me, I came out of the relationship at peace because I feel like I really experienced that style of like try yeah. everything. Like I, I had already experienced that before my relationship. So getting out of my rela- this relationship now, I felt like, okay, I didn't go through that stage, but I'm more, I, I am doing more things, but I'm less rushed to do it. Mm-hmm. I feel more at peace and I'm just kind of trying to like focus on my, all my energy on myself and navigating my life now by myself. Whereas I think this one has been different for me because we live together. I think it changes a lot of things when you break up, when you're living with somebody Mm -hmm. like just like things like I I leaned on him to do a lot of stuff when you're living with somebody, you know, like you lean on each other for certain things and you always know somebody has your back. It could be just, for example, cleaning the house. You know, you're having a friend over. You have somebody who's always there for you and is going to help you out. Whereas now I'm alone. So it's like I need to get everything done for myself. There's no one to fall back on. Like if I need to get something done, it's me who's going to have to do it. There's no one there to help me out. And I think in that sense, I've been kind of struggling because I feel like, oh, fuck, like there's so much to do. I'm, I'm like overwhelmed. But then at the same time, I feel like, I've almost gained an invisible amount of time just being single. So Mm -hmm. I feel like I have even more time and less stress Mm -hmm. because one thing I realized being in a relationship, I'm a very busy person and often every week I would feel so like overwhelmed with stress. Like I would get home, I would feel guilty when my boyfriend would come home and I was still working. And then I felt guilty, guilty, guilty as I'm working. I'm, I'm yeah. feeling like I need to make dinner. I need to make dinner. I know he's waiting. I know he's hungry. Okay, wait, it's making him sound like a fucking when's dinner. But like, that's not the point. It's like he would get home and it's like, well, it's just little ready. thoughts that are always going to be in the back of your head. Right. Yeah. Because you're always, you're thinking you're com- about yourself, but you're thinking about somebody else as well as well and their needs. And it's like, Okay. Whereas if it was just you, you'd be like, I'll just Uber Eats and like, I'll just continue working on my desk. But you can't do that. And I think a lot of parts in the relationship as being someone who's very busy, I felt very guilty that I couldn't do things. Like it was like, okay, like I'm sorry. And then I would break and then I would stop working and then I would go make dinner and then I would eat and then I would rush and then I would have to leave and then start getting ready and film the podcast. And I felt like a lot of guilt for not having time to do things for him whereas Mm -hmm. now that i'm alone i'm so everything that i do at my time i don't feel guilty anymore because there's no one else involved i literally feel that i even remember when i was still in my relationship i was really working a lot on the weekdays and then when it came to the weekend i really had to do my things but i felt so much guilt and knowing that like i haven't really seen him during the weekdays so now it's the weekend and i should prioritize seeing him but like So I'm feeling bad and I'm going there, but then I'm going there with my work I have to do. So it's like, I don't feel like I'm fully spending the time with him. And it just becomes this like cycle where like, he's like, well, we haven't seen each other. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you doing things? But also like trying to get to where you're getting at. So I feel like even getting to your goals is a lot easier because you're not, you're not like having to fill that space with someone. Exactly. And that's the other thing too. It's like, I'm trying to, it's like, okay, I'll stop working to do this or to hang out with you or to make dinner or like but let's eat dinner together or whatever. But then now I'm stopping the time that I would be working. So now I have to go back and work more. And then it's just this thing that even though you think, oh, living together, it's it's not taking that much time away from yourself, but it is though. Because 
being alone now that I have full control over my needs, like I said, it's difficult because it's all on me. But at the end of the day, it's all on me. So if I want to work and eat dinner at 1 a.m. and Uber Eats it, I could do that. Mm -hmm. There's no one else involved in my decisions. So in that sense, I suddenly feel like I have more time because I have full control over what I'm doing and my choices and my time schedule. And I'm not real, like... I'm not yeah. putting it on anyone else. And I don't have to go on anyone else's schedule. Sometimes it's not even sometimes it's not even about choices, but it's even like just your mind being at ease. Mm-hmm. Because like for me when I was dating my ex-boyfriend, it's like there was a lot of worries that I had with him, and even if he was living day by day, these were things I was worrying about for him. So I was taking space and energy in my actual uh day yeah right so like now that i don't have to worry about that person and and what's going on it gives me that time to really put it on myself so it's less like um you're really yeah it's like we're saying you're really just thinking about what it is you want and i don't know i think you know being selfish is so important when it comes to yourself and that's why single is not as bad as you guys think folks you learn a lot i think being single is like the best thing that you could be especially when you're young I mean at any point in your life but especially when you're like on your grind and you're young it's like yeah it's nice to be in a relationship but being single just gives you all this extra time and like you said like you know like the meme of like you know sleeping like a baby when you know you're not getting cheated on you know like all these little things yeah. you don't realize take up space in your mind and take up energy when you're f- worrying about somebody else, focusing mm-hmm. on somebody else, whether it's their loyalty, whether it's what they're doing, whether it's worrying about like their their well-being or their mental health or anything like that, that takes up space and energy in your own life. And once you don't have that anymore and you don't have to worry about anyone else, it's like, huh, I could, it's just about me, you mm-hmm. know, like you suddenly feel Like you have more time. Yeah. You know? So in that sense, you know, your brain is uncluttered. The schedule you create is for yourself and only for yourself. So there's a lot more time. Another thing that I think is really important when you're single is, you know, getting your life in order and setting yourself up for success, but also financially. And I know that right now, I mean, I'm paying the full rent and it's not feeling like it's a great situation for me financially. But when you're single, you know, sometimes in a relationship, depending on the relationship you have, it's easier to save money. You know, when you have, you're dating a guy that's paying all your stuff, maybe a little easier. But in a usual relationship, to be in honest, an average though, relationship. To be honest, though, a lot of girls who date guys who have a lot of money still find themselves in a lot of debt. And I'll tell you why. Because you are trying to um, kind of live up this lifestyle that always, you know, keeps you, you know, if you're doing a lot of fancy restaurants, then you're going to want to have really cute outfits. You know, even though he's paying for everything, all the things the girls have to pay for already on an everyday basis, plus, you know, the pressure of dating somebody who is paying for everything will only actually make you spend more money. So, yeah, I think in any... To live up to the lifestyle. To live up to the lifestyle. I have a, a really good friend who was dating someone who was paying for literally everything, but all her money, all her checks, it's not like she was saving them, right? Because she she wanted to still blend in with the family. And there were so many things that she was trying to, like, achieve and live this lifestyle that wasn't necessarily in her... In her her budget. (laughs) Well, it's so true. I mean, like, you know, there's always going to be a relationship where you come out on top and you come out with more money. But I think most of the time when you're in a relationship, you actually come out of it not on top. And yes, like you could live together and you're splitting costs and you're splitting this, like living costs, yes. But there's so many things financially that you don't even think about when you're in a relationship. Like, first of all, birthdays, Christmas, of all these events that suddenly not only do you have them, your family, but now you have them and also their family. It's mm-hmm. like all the events that you have to go to. It's like, okay, I have my cousin's wedding, but now they have their cousin's wedding too. And then it's like the aunt's 50th anniversary and then it's the birthday and you have to buy a gift and all these things come out of your pocket and when you're single you're still spending money but on yourself and on your family you know what i mean yeah. and you don't even realize the things that you're spending money on it just like in in every in every case it's like almost most of the time doubling whatever you're doing it's like times two now and also i'm not gonna lie men have it even harder in this area because not only are they doing that but chances are you know most of the time they're paying for all the dinners they're paying for all the this mm-hmm. they're they're paying a lot of the money and for a guy you can't i truly believe you can't date or you should not really date if you're not financially stable mm-hmm. because especially if you're looking to have a relationship where you're 
want to like treat your girl and stuff like that or you want to do anything you know I, I really believe that either party should be financially stable if you're getting into a relationship because anytime you go into something and you're not good on your own whether it's even emotionally but financially it's like a girl you get into a relationship with a guy he moves in with you you're not financially stable enough to leave him now because you need him to live with you so that you guys could so you can afford your rent mm -hmm. and then you're fucked you know you wouldn't have that problem if you were already settled on your own yeah and then on the other hand dating a guy who doesn't have who's not financially stable suddenly you can't go out like i was dating I somebody think, who yeah i i was in a relationship with somebody who had a lot of debt and we couldn't like Every time that I wanted to do something, go to a restaurant, do an activity, do anything. Like, I'm not even talking expensive, guys. I'm talking anything. It was always like a burden, like, a mm -hmm. well, this and then that. And then it's like, he's feeling guilty, but then he's mad at me because it always he's goes back. feeling guilty. It always yeah. goes back, guys, to the story at your birthday. <laughs> BJ. Well, it's just like, and then I want to pay for it. And then he's mad because I'm paying for it. But then it's just like, well, look, don't get in a relationship if you can't afford to do basic activities. Mm -hmm. Because now, what, we're both supposed to stay home because you can't afford it? And it's not even that. I was in a relationship with somebody who didn't want me to go out by myself. You know, I think a lot of people here, you know, think I'm very materialistic. And like, I set my standards up where I'm like, I'm not going to date a broke guy. And I only want to date a rich guy. And I think it all, it always comes back to the idea of, you know broke guys at the end of the day they're always angry that they're broke they're always mad about something and that 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 trickles down into the relationship it's not even just about like not doing the dinner or not doing the activity it's like they're even mad about it they have like some kind of insecurity about it and and that i don't need amongst all the other issues that come with being in a regular relationship and that that's literally most of the reason why i don't want to date a broke guy well you know? i can't I can't date somebody who's not secure with what they're making. I'm not saying be a millionaire, but if you're not confident with the amount of money that you have, it's never going to work because everything we're going to do is going to be an issue. It's going to be a fight. And if you can't afford it and then I want to pay and then it, that's an issue. Yeah. And then I'm going to do it without you because you can't afford it. And then that's a fucking issue. Yeah. You know, like I just truly believe that if you're not set up to do the things that you should be doing in a relationship, which is dates, mm -hmm. which is activities, which is going on trips. That's what life is. Yeah. If you can't afford to do those things, then stay single, focus on yourself, stay yeah. home seven days a week, exactly. that's, grind. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like for all the guys who listen, because I know that it's, you know, 50%. If you are like, why don't I have a girlfriend? But like, you're not exactly where you want to be financially. Then I would say, I mean, it goes for both, but especially for men, because I feel like men have that pressure even more. Mm -hmm. um, don't be worried about chicks and like picking up girls and like, you know, asking them to Netflix and chill because you can't go out for dinner. Like literally take that time to literally take that time to just grind on, you know, getting there yourself so that, you know, you're not going to go into a relationship being so angry and bitter at certain things because you just, you always wanted it, but you never worked on it. Like, well, it's also like people want to provide a certain standard. I feel like anyone wants to give the most, you know, as a person, you just, you want to give the best that you can. And sometimes you can't do that. And that makes people like very angry and guilty. Yeah. And if you're going to be like that in a relationship, it's better you stay single. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a position where you're spending all your money on your girl and then you're getting out of it broke. Like that's yeah. not smart either. You should really being single is the time to focus on yourself. Do what you want to do because it's not hurting anyone but yourself to stay home seven days a week and grind. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it, you do it when you're single. It's not fair. And I truly believe this. And, and this is in part like, you know, part of the guilt that I felt in my relationship working a lot. I think that if you are making big sacrifices in your life, it's not right to do it when you have a partner. And that being said, I think, you know, you can expect them to do those things as well. It's one thing if you want to make big changes in your life and be like, okay, I'm not going out anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. Sure. But like, you can't put that on your partner as well. You can't be like, okay, we're not going out because we're saving money because I want to save money. We're not doing dinners anymore. We're not doing movies. We're not doing trips. It's like, you can't put that on your partner. You know, if you want to do that, you do that. And if she's not interested or he's not interested, then you be single. But mm -hmm. I do think it's a little bit unfair to do drastic changes in your life like that when you have a partner because when you get in a relationship, it's like, oh, we're going to do dinners, we're going to have dates, we're yeah. going to go on trips together, I we're totally going to enjoy life agree together. With that. And then somebody switches it up and is like, never mind, I want to save, save, save. I don't want to do these things, which is fine, which is okay. 
But sometimes it's not the best thing to do while you have a partner because that person's life is also getting affected. And maybe yes. they're not willing to, you know, maybe they're not willing to do those things. Maybe they don't want to stop going mm-hmm. out. Maybe they don't want to stay home every night and, and eat ramen, you know? Yeah. So I think it's like, it's a really sensitive thing. But, and I felt like that too. Like I worked so fucking hard. And sometimes I felt like it's a little bit unfair that I'm working so hard when I have a partner. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm putting this on you now. Yeah. That it's like, I'm working seven days a week and sorry, you're going to get my leftover time, you know? Yeah. But, but I also, do think I was like that at the beginning. Yeah, too. but also I think if, if your partner was as like, you know, motivated and, and as ambitious as you were, I think it wouldn't be that, you wouldn't feel that guilty. I mean, I think it's with everything. You always wish that you could give more time to yeah. somebody like especially when you're spending a lot of time on yourself yeah. in a relationship and that's what i think is important and you but know i think time is also money yeah right and if you know most of our listeners are probably around our age and are grinding and want to make money and it's a hard time to be in a relationship if, if that person isn't bringing you to where you need to get to then it's better you just do it on your own and you and then you just you meet them when you're you're finally at ease and happy with where you're at you know, it's sad to say, and sometimes we don't want to admit this to ourselves, but oftentimes being with somebody can actually like hinder your success and make you get somewhere slower than you would if you were just single. Yep. Because I think when you're making decisions with somebody else in mind, which is the right thing to do when you're in a relationship, you compromise, you have somebody in mind. But when you're doing that, you're not always choosing the best thing for you. And especially if you're someone that's like highly motivated, highly ambitious, it's really difficult to make decisions based off of other people Mm -hmm. when you have like these goals that you really want to achieve. For example, I have a friend who always wanted to work, you know, and be a waitress, but her boyfriend was not okay with that. He didn't like that. That's fine, but the income is not coming in, right? So you kind of stop yourself. You're like, I can't be a waitress. So you lose that that sense of like income, you know? So when you're single, it's like, well, if I want to be a waitress, I'll go be a waitress. You don't have to think about your man who doesn't want you in. Exactly. And that's a whole other conversation. Because if, if, if your man doesn't want you as a waitress, but he's not pulling up the money that you'd be getting to fucking be there, then... You have no fucking say, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> I always think it's very important to like, you know, date for where you're trying to go and not where you're at. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will make fun of me and be like, you know, um, like my my gay best friend will always be like, um, when when guys will go up to him and be like, well, I'm really interested in your friend. He'll be like, whoa, she won't date you. And, you know, they'll be like, what the fuck? Like, why? Well, you still like you still live at home with your parents. And, and they'll be like, well, what, like, what the fuck? And I always get mad at my gay best, my gay best friend. Cause I'm like, well, don't say that, you know, like then you're just giving a bad perception of me, but at the same time, who cares? And you know, who am I to say that? Right. Because I still quote unquote live at home, but that's fine. You shouldn't be like, oh, well it's because I live at home. I'm not allowed to have the standards where I don't want my guy to live, you know, by himself. Mm -hmm. it should be fine that I live at home and I still want somebody who is living, living by himself because I think there's nothing wrong with dating for what you want. If your goal is to move out and you want to be somewhere else in life, why would you go date somebody who's at the same stage as you, as you and still at home? There's nothing wrong with dating for what you want and not what you have. Yeah. That's so important. I also think that in the same beat you know i think there's also nothing wrong with dating someone who is at the same level as you but it's very important that that person wants the same things that you want i think it's fine if you're meeting somebody who's super ambitious and you're down to go down that road but i think i'm gonna speak for me and like i'm super i'm I'm at a stage where like i want what i want and i'm going after what i want and i want to be successful and nothing's gonna stop me so i'm i'm not gonna date somebody who's living at home no that that's just that's just it. Mm-hmm. That that's my point of view, and it's not everyone's. But that's the way I see it. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to meet someone who's who's at the same stage as me because I'm literally dating for what I want. If I'm manifesting for something, I'm manifesting for what I want. Mm-hmm. And the same way it should be with you know manifesting my house, manifesting this, manifesting my condo, manifesting anything in life, my career. I have to manifest for the guy I want, not the guy who's who's not manifesting himself. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, I I get what you're saying. It's it's just the same way it goes back to, like, I'm not dating a broke guy. Like, I'm not dating 
for where I'm at. I'm dating for what I want. So the same way I'm not going to date a broke guy, I'm not going to date a guy who lives at home. Like it's, it's just the standards I put out for myself and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, settle. But with that being said, I know that, you know, people can have the same maybe standards as me, but the older they get, they might be like, oh, you know what? Are my standards, you know, too high? And is that the reason I'm not, you know, meeting my guy? Should I lower my standards? And the answer is always no. Don't lower your standards and start accepting certain things because you find yourself at a stage where like I'm getting older and it's time to settle down mm -hmm. because that is just not the answer. You didn't do all this work and come this far to stop now and start settling. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just not a thing. It should never be a thing. I think it's normal though. Like the longer people are single, they kind of lose that like yeah. fresh. And we should talk about that. Yeah. Like that fresh feeling of being single like i think there's a point when you're single that you really know what you want you really have your standards and you're not willing to budge on them and you feel kind of invincible and i think that happens in the first year or so where you know you don't need the validation of a relationship mm -hmm. because you had that yeah and you know that somebody's out there that's gonna love you like you don't need that i feel like once you hit like the two three year four year mark mm -hmm. of being single you start to think is anyone ever gonna love me Am I ever going to date anyone? Why haven't I settled down And I yet? think those are the things will make someone start settling. Yeah. They'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Those are the thought that, thoughts that start making you think, wait, are my standards too high? What am I doing wrong? Is it me? Am I unlovable? But the answer and is no. Feeling, they're not high. Yeah. You, you start feeling like, maybe you're doing something wrong but in reality you need to keep that same energy as that fresh single confidence because there's no point in being single for four whatever there's not a, i'm not even gonna put a year to it but there's no point in being single for a long period of time if you're just gonna end up settling for somebody that you don't it doesn't even meet your standards mm -hmm. at that because point you should have settled a at the time fucking beginning. because of a time because you're getting older like <clears throat> no 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 yeah. no <laughs> Guys, us ladies, we don't ask for much. But one thing we do ask for is a nice clean slate if we're about to go down on you. Because I don't really feel like getting a little something something stuck between my teeth. Yeah, it will be the last time that you'll see me. And I won't even probably suck your dick the first time. Exactly. So if you're working with a little bit of extra, you know, trees <laughs> around your genitalia, well then, do I have the perfect thing for you? You need to join Manscaped because there is over 2 million men worldwide who use Manscaped because it is the best in below the waist hygiene for men. So you can get anything from a ball razor called the Lawnmower 4.0. You can get a nose and ear hair trimmer, the Weed Whacker 4.0. They have boxers, they have shampoo, they have conditioner. They literally have everything for men's hygiene. So come on. Hygiene is up there on my list of things that are important for me when I'm looking at a guy. Yeah. So get on that shit. You don't want to be in the girls group chat the next day going, he did not mow that lawn. Guys, we're giving you every opportunity to not be in the girls group chat. So use our discount code chemicalx at checkout to receive 20% off your entire order and free shipping. That's like all the things you need in order to be getting the girl you want. So, in order to succeed. Yeah, in order to succeed. So Chemical X at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. And it might be a little biased, but there's nothing better than something Italian. And that goes with Izotti because Izotti is an Italian-based, tailor-made bespoke suit brand. So if you're looking for a suit for a special event or just because you want to be hot and look profesh, then you got to go to Izotti because you're going to put in all your measurements Get yourself a suit that is made for you and nothing hugs the body like something that's literally made for you. Yeah, and so. we know how annoying it is to have to go somewhere and get, you know, your suit tailor-made. So we're avoiding all that for you with just an online app. So go to izati.com and use our discount code chemicalx at checkout to receive 20% off your entire order. I, I really think that, you know, you should always keep in mind... If you've been single for a while, you should always think back to like first year single you and yes. think like, what did that girl want? Like, what did she truly believe she deserved? And ride with that. Yeah. Because once you get there, it's easy to start being like, it's easy to start second guessing yourself mm -hmm. and start feeling like maybe you're not worth what you want. But 
that bitch one year single she knows what she's worth and she knows what she wants and mm-hmm. you need to always reference that person you know yeah. that's right yeah and when you're spending that time you know being three four years single you start doubting yourself and then the universe manifesting is just working so against you you are not you are not attracting the person into your life because now you're just putting yourself in a hole Mm -hmm. right so you just have to continue doing what you're doing and continue your standards continue working on yourself what it is you want and then eventually the person will fit your mold yeah also i think another really exciting thing about being single is i feel like also one thing that i will say i feel like being single i wake up every day in like a different mindset And it's not like better or worse. It's just a different mindset. I feel like my brain and the way that I think has really changed. Like I said, the thing about like seeing the, the clear view and seeing like getting out of the tunnel vision of my life. I feel like it also kind of changed the way I see everything. Yeah, it's because when you're in a relationship, it's like you were saying you have this vision where you're like, my life is going this way. It's only going straight you know, the next step is we have kids, we have this. So you, you block out the, the, you block out any opportunities that might come. You don't Mm -hmm. even see them. So you're not even able to manifest them because you're not even putting your energy there. So it it just doesn't fit in the 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 second that tunnel is like removed, then you can actually see clear and you're opening up like a different part of your brain Mm -hmm. where, where it was completely closed off. And then that's why you start manifesting different things. Exactly. And I think the way that it's changed the way I think is that I wake up every day and I'm a very future thinking person. I'm very excited about opportunity. I mean, I think everyone is, but I really thrive off the idea that anything could happen. And I think I've never felt more like anything could happen than when I'm single. And it's not Facts. because I was not allowed to do anything or that I was, you know, um Well, it's just normal. You wake up and you might date like a, a fucking famous golfer. You don't it, know. You, you just don't know. It's not even about dating. It's just I don't I don't have anything else in my life but myself. So it's like I'm walking down the street any opera i could meet somebody i could talk to somebody any opportunity could happen to me the next day somebody could offer me a job in fucking south africa you mm-hmm. know like you never know where your life can go and like it like but for just example living, i get a job but I, living that kind of life where you don't know what the next day has in store for you is such a thrill and so exciting and like it should never be something that's like it's scary in a way yeah because you don't know where your life is going but maybe it's the best time but to be alive best feeling because anything ha- could happen like your story could go in any way like i said somebody could magically offer me a job in south africa if i was in a relationship no matter how good my relationship is i would be having to think logically of can i go to south africa and how am i going to make my relationship You're work trying and to what's going to happen puzzle you know fit. what i mean it's like but when you're single somebody comes and offers me a job in south africa Hello. What do I have to lose? What do I have to lose? You know what I mean? Like anything yeah. is possible. And I think it's not even just in dating. It's just in life. And when you're walking down the street, when you're walking in life, when you're waking up with that mindset of the idea that anything could happen, I just feel like it brings the the best opportunities. Mm-hmm. That little change of waking up with like excitement, which I'm not saying I didn't have in my relationship. I'm just saying it's like to a whole nother scale now. And you don't feel like guilty. Like if I would get an opportunity, what's going to happen to my relationship? What's going to do this? Because that was often something that would happen to me. People would be like, well, what if, you know, you get your job moves to LA? What are you going to do? What's going to happen in your relationship? Mm -hmm. These are all things that I had to think, you know, think about and be like, how am I going to make this work? And I'm going to find a way. But at the end of the day, you still have that, that panic and that stress of like, what if I get a crazy opportunity and I feel like I'm going to lose my relationship to take that opportunity yeah which is which is a scary thing you know but i think when you're single you don't have that anymore anything could happen and you're like yes baby yeah and waking up every day with that mindset just brings the best opportunities it brings the best energy towards you and you really need to lean into that and i know some people they feel like scared of like oh i don't know where my life is going i don't know what this but i i really think the important thing when you're single is to lean into that energy Mm -hmm. to lean into the fact that you don't know what could happen to lean into the fact that tomorrow you might be in a different fucking city because you don't know yeah or you could be doing nothing for two months Mm -hmm. it could be that or and then one one day after you something crazy happens yeah i also want to talk about the person who you know is single and who hasn't tapped into that and is 
kind of really bitter and like mad about it Mm -hmm. because that's a whole other like like problem yeah you know you have to look if you are that person who is completely you know single it's been months and you know that the guy you were with is not your person but you haven't met anyone else and you're just like bitter and over time you're not becoming more at ease with it and you're just like very you know just mad and happy not happy and, and angry you have to ask yourself like what's wrong with you oh 100 percent. like what what is going on like what are you lacking in your your own life that is not being fulfilled by you for you to be so unhappy because like we always say a partner cannot be your everything they cannot they cannot make you happy happy has to come within mm-hmm. so if you are so miserable being alone and you're you're listening you have to ask yourself what are you not doing for yourself what are you insecure about what is it that you are lacking in your own life that is penetrating into society yeah and what are you doing that's making you unhappy like people might think oh but i am going on dates but i am this but maybe that's not what you shouldn't be what you should be doing Mm -hmm. you really have to think about why you're unhappy being single is amazing being in a relationship is amazing Mm -hmm. i think both of them are super great super fun super beautiful experiences and if being single is making you unhappy and you're mad and you have negative energy there's something wrong there that you need to look within and figure out what it is that's causing yeah. that sometimes i feel like i have the opposite um like effect like sometimes i think and i don't know if anyone else listening feels this way too but being single now and i've actually felt like this for a, a long time and everyone always tells me it's because you haven't met your person but i always have this like vision where like when i actually meet my person my life is over and my life stops and like it's just you know it's it's just not the same and it's never going to be as fun and and i'm like at that stage where i enjoy being single so much that the thought about being in a relationship scares me so much that i think my life is over when it's time to get married and like you know couples don't have fun anymore and like it just becomes like you know everyday chores and like you're just in this routine that it's life is just the same from one day to the next and i don't have that like um kind of like high of like being able to just jump on a plane and go do what I want. And that's my fear. I have like the opposite effect where it's like, I feel like my life is over the second I, you know, have kids and meet a man. Well, I disagree. I mean, I, I don't well, even disagree I, I know. with you. I know. Everyone I talk yeah. to says like, that's not right. And like, you I think know, you'll it's get different. Over that. I guess it's because I haven't found that, that like it really, really scares me. Mm-hmm. And I also think it's because I'm not ready to be in a relationship. And you're because, just happy now. I mean, yeah. I think when you're in your element and, It's like being in a relationship. You think being single is going to be the worst thing ever. You think I'm not going to have fun. How am I going to do this? Not in a really, you know, how am I going to do this single? It's, I think it's the same fear of unknown. I also think it's like, you don't have to have the same path like everyone else. That's another thing. It's like, if I'm so worried about being in a relationship where I know it's going to get into routine and I'm not going to be able to travel and do this, then I'm in the wrong relationship. Because if I'm actually dating somebody or getting married to somebody who is on my vibe, then life should literally just be a fucking ball every day. I'm with my best friend 100%. and we're just doing everything. It shouldn't be something that I'm feeling like I'm I'm being pulled back from. It yeah. should literally just be something that I'm like enjoying my life and just doing it with a partner. So I always have to like train my brain to go back there because it's really sometimes it gets really dark for me. <laughs> well, I totally understand where you're coming from, but I do think over time that and that that's fear the difference between being recently single and then being fucking single (laughs) well no i think like that's gonna change i think like like we said Mm -hmm. there's stages there's stages with everything i think there's a time where you start getting tired of being single where you're ready for new experiences Mm -hmm. i think everything is like you know a stage it's a season um and i totally understand where you're coming from and i resonate with it and i and i know a lot of people relate to that and i know that i used to think that as well um but i do know and coming from someone who did date someone who really made me feel like like I was going up and I felt like we started dating and I still kept going up on that same road I didn't feel like it affected me whereas some of my other relationships I felt that like drag down Mm -hmm. um so I know that it's possible to be with somebody that literally adds to your life and you have a great time and I know that that's when you're with the right person that that's what it's going to be like so I don't think that you should be afraid of yeah you know I, I think everything is a new experience and everything is fun and that's why i think being single should be fucking fun 
because it's a new experience, mm-hmm. you know, just like being in a relationship one day, married one day, having kids one day. Those are all different seasons, different experiences, different like chapters you go through in your life. And they all come with highs and lows. Yeah. And yeah. the single chapter, you know, it's no, the single it's part of highs, highs this, and lows. The single chapter is so fun. It's like I'm going to Italy and then I'm going to Mykonos and then like I'm even worried. This is how crazy I manifested something. I'm like, maybe, you know, I'll meet like the love of my life in Mykonos. And I'm even like, should I tell work I'm coming back on the 23rd or should I leave a couple days open just in case I meet someone and I don't want to go back right after Mykonos and maybe just do a little quick Ibiza trip like that's where I'm at in the singleness. It's like, I'm so open to just like doing more and not being closed off and not living by routine that like, that's another reason why I'm just scared to be like tied down. Anyway. I totally agree though. I I totally get your vibe. I think, you know, there's so many good things that come with being single and you need to lean into it. And another thing that being single is a really good time for is boosting your self-confidence oh yes i know a lot of people get out of relationships they feel like you know they had their boyfriend that made them feel good or their girlfriend that made them feel like validated sexy. or guys or the complete opposite 100 percent. you know how many you know guys can be very like you know bitter after and call you names and disgusting never talk to them again block them but i'm just saying like a lot of the times you know when people are miserable they'll they'll lean into the the effect of like bouncing that energy back so like Mm -hmm. they want you to feel worthless they want you to feel like you can't get anything better so you feel so little so that you lose your self-confidence and that you actually start to believe the things that you never thought you would you know so when you're single guys it's when it's time to boost the confidence yeah it's so true a lot of people actually a lot of people get out of relationship feeling very insecure especially if like there was cheating or or something fucked up you know you you get out of or there just like name very calling, different, you know, like yeah. those things are, are not forgotten. A hundred percent. And I think being single is the perfect time to really be a confident person. And I think like for everything to align in your life, you need to be confident with who you are. Not even looks wise, just like confident with who you are as a person. And forget about whatever the fuck somebody said about you. Forget about how somebody made you feel. Be your best self and lean into your confidence. And if that's going on dates with guys because it's going to make you feel better or getting glammed up, going to the club, But then club, also, going if it's, out, if it's it going on dates, you know, that's going to make you not feel good, <clears throat> then don't do it. Really look within and be like, is this going to make me feel better or is this too soon? Yeah. You know, like, because you don't want to do things too soon on if you're not ready for it because that'll just, you know, have you maybe running back or just like not in the best mindset. I mean, I think if you're insecure or like feeling low on confidence, the worst thing that you can do is try to find validation in someone else. That's so it. the worst thing you can do is try to go on a date so that somebody's you feel like the attraction, you feel better because what happens when the guy makes you feel like shit, you're going to feel even worse. Like a lot of dates go bad. And if that date goes bad and you were seeking a confidence yeah. boost, let me tell you, you're going to be down in the fucking dust. Um, so it's really important to think about what you're doing and think about if you want to do something. If you guys want a whole other episode on confidence, we made we made an episode, a podcast on that. And that was a really big hit. And we've heard from a lot of you after that episode. So you can go back to that episode. I don't know which number it is. But I don't know which number it is, but something about confidence. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Confidence is key, man cheesy but it is another thing about you know doing what you want to do one thing that i will say is you know while i was in my relationship i would always think like wow i'm so happy that i can just stay home and like be in love and like cuddle and watch movies and i feel so happy and so in my element and i don't feel the pressure to go out and to you know, socialize. And I felt really good doing that. And I felt really happy and at peace that I had that option. Mm -hmm. And now being single, it's a little different because when you're single, even when you don't want to do something, you're kind of like, should I do it? You're like, well, what the fuck do I have else? Like, who do I have to ask? I have nothing else to do though, you know? And I'm finding myself more and more saying yes to opportunities, saying yes to things even though I don't want to do them, but sometimes it makes for like fun experiences and sometimes you don't have a good time, but sometimes you do have a good time and sometimes it's just good to like go out and put energy towards 
other things and socialize and make new friends and have a good time. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to get comfortable and like everyone loves to cuddle and chill and have that like homey life. But sometimes you just gotta take the fucking club night and go on the club night and go drink and and go for dinners and and hang out with people you wouldn't normally hang out with yes. because you you had your friends you had your boyfriend you had the family like it's very scheduled to have a relationship yeah. but there's no time for new friends yeah. you know and when you're single you have the opportunity to just you know see more family see more friends you know even though i think that when you're in a relationship you should never let all those go and you should still make time you do have extra time to see them more to do that and different people too like totally different like yeah. right now i'm finding myself hanging out a lot with like work friends mm -hmm. people that when i was in my relationship it was like not even in a mean way but i feel like you have like your close friends your family yeah. you prioritize your time and then after that once you have extra time you tend to like hang out with people that are not like your dailies you know so and when you're in a relationship you never have time for those people yeah you know but then yeah. you start hanging out with them and you're like, oh my God, this you're is so fun. cool. This is another experience. This is a different, like, you know what I mean? Like, this I think is a with different. Every type of like friend group, work group, you can, you have a chance to be like you, we've said in the past, like a different version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And even I recently have found myself chilling with like work friends and it's really nice. It's like they see you in a different light than your friends do. And it's just like you have a different kind of bond and sometimes it's just fun to close up and just say, let's go get drunk. Like there's just, it, it, it's amazing. And with that being said, I kind of want to talk about, you know, let's say you're in your late twenties and you find yourself, you know, your friend group is pretty much like either married or has kids. And you're like, I am not there. That is not where I'm at. And if I chill with them, like there's a baby crying and like, you know, I signed up to be your friend. I didn't sign up to be this little dude's friend. <laughs> yeah, I don't so know who the fuck this bitch is. I don't know is. who this is, but I didn't sign up for this, and I'm not in that stage of my life. So I love you. I love your baby, but um, I'm single, and I need different opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to, like, really put yourself out there and, like you were saying, do things that you don't normally do. And sometimes that means hanging out with different cliques, yeah. different groups, you know? If you're single and you want to do different things, then you have to look for friends and people in your life that are kind of on the same, you know, journey as you. And there's nothing wrong. It doesn't make you any less of friends with your your oldies. But sometimes you just have to your oldies, you know, sometimes you just have to outsource. Well, I totally agree. And I think often this happens a lot in relationships. I find like you'll be in a relationship and then, you know, when it's ending, it'll always be like your boyfriend will always say, oh, it's your single friends that are trying to convince you to be single with them because they're unhappy. La, 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 la. And you're like, shut the fuck up. First of all. Yeah. No. Um, like when you start hanging, you know, like I've always experienced that. And I think that's like the funniest thing. Like maybe in some circumstances, that's a thing. But I find it's so true that you always gravitate towards people that are going through the same thing as you in life. So if I'm getting out of a relationship, why would I go chill with all my friends who are in serious relationship having kids getting married and especially when that's, that's not my vibe and especially if that's not what you want at the point at, at that point it'll just make you feel just like a little bit more sad about your life because yeah. you're like well i should be there and i'm not but if you hang around with people who are you know on the complete same vibe as you you won't feel that pressure as much you're and just you'll more be living free. more free yeah yeah and i think there's nothing wrong with it i really don't think it's bad to you know, to like to prioritize time with people who are more in line with what your life is. Mm -hmm. It's just naturally when you're single, you tend to hang out with the people that go out, the people that do more because who goes out on a Tuesday night? Someone who's single. Nobody in a relationship goes out on a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it just, you start doing things that you wouldn't normally do if you were in a relationship and that's okay. Like you don't need to, and that's the thing about being single. You don't need to stick to the person you were while you were in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Maybe you were the person who liked to stay home, who liked to read, who liked to chill, yeah. who didn't go out much. You don't need to be that person when you're single. And and if you want to, you can. Like, yeah. there's no rule. You don't need to be going mm -hmm. out every night either when you're single. Yeah. I think you should take the opportunity to be single. I think you should do more, do more activities, Um, you know, take advantage of the yeah. fact that it's just you. But if you're at your happiest, just chilling mm -hmm. and, and focusing on yourself, then do that literally take up new hobbies do whatever you have to do to be busy and do things that you really enjoy now if you're three years single 
and you're like feeling yourself kind of like wanting to like settle because you're like what's going on or you're finding yourself in the boat where you're like my friends are on different paths then I think a great way to like kind of meet new people and you know find your find, find your find your voice yeah. you know I would say is really what is it that you enjoy doing if you enjoy doing tennis then sign up to tennis okay because where is your future man probably going to be doing things that either you enjoy doing or that are in the same circle? So if you're three years single and you're like, why the hell am I not meeting anyone? Well, one, are you leaving your house? Two, where <laughs> are you going? Are you going to clubs every night? Yeah. Because you're, you know, these are all things that will stop you from meeting your person. And, you know, being being in a relationship and finding that person, it shouldn't be work. And we say it should just come. But at the end of the day, who's your circle? Yeah. You know, like if you're looking to be in something serious, then you have to put yourself in places where you see your future husband. Yeah. And does it match with what you want to do? So if you like going and fucking do pottery, then it'd be nice. You know, you go there and you finally you meet somebody who likes doing pottery, too. Holy, it's a Hallmark movie. <laughs> is it a Hallmark movie or is it Ghost? <laughs> is it Dirty Dancing? What's the movie that there's like pottery? Fuck, I don't know. You always come out with these movie references that I don't get. Oldies but goodies. Um, So true, though. I think, like we said, there's different stages of single. And I think if you're acting like stage three single, but you're in stage six, that's a problem. Yeah. You, If you're looking to, to like, if you're ready and you want to, like, find a yeah. relationship, which is fine. I think everyone gets there mm -hmm. at a certain point. I don't think it's bad to want a relationship. I think it's bad to be actively seeking a relationship. Yeah. Like, I think that's not okay. I think it's, it's absolutely going to come to you. Yeah, when you're not expecting it. But you know, want, want to know why a lot of people say, it always, it came to me when I wasn't expecting it. It's because you were probably doing things for yourself, things mm -hmm. you wanted to do, and placing yourself in places that you enjoyed being in. That's why it just came. Yeah. Because it fit in the circle you were already molding for yourself. Yeah. Right? 100%. Like, I think if you're looking for a serious relationship and you're st still doing things that stage three single, which is like going mm -hmm. out, you know, like catch flights off feelings you know just doing all this stuff that you're not in the element of where you want to find somebody mm -hmm. like if you think about it you know think about who you are you're like do i want to meet my future husband in a club yeah. maybe yes so go clubbing but maybe not so don't go club you are know you what i'm mean? messaging like, ed sheeran or am i what ed sheeran <laughs> Well, I mean, I found love in the club, but you know what I mean? I always said, but, but look at that. You're single now, <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it does go with the type of person I am. Like me personally, yeah, I can imagine myself meeting a guy in a club because of my personality, because of who I am. I work in clubs. I like the nightlife. Mm -hmm. I like the fast life. No problem. But somebody who's looking for, you know, a different type of lifestyle, you need to align yourself. It's so true. If you like dancing, go take a fucking dance class. Maybe you're not going to meet the love of your life at a dance class, but you're putting that energy into something you like. You're you're meeting people that also like the same thing as you, which maybe might bring you to different areas. Well, exactly. It's like you you sign up for a dancing class, okay? In the dancing class, you become friends with a girl that, you know, now all of a sudden these things are all manifesting its way into a new friend group. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't put yourself out in different places, then you won't give you know, the world and manifesting and, and the opportunity to meet new people. You have to throw yourself out there. You have to get uncomfortable in order to meet different types of people. You know, maybe, you know, being in the dance class, you're not going to meet your cha-cha salsa dancer. <laughs> and maybe that's not even what you want. Yeah. Like some, like I was talking to a friend and she's like, you know, just because I want to go and, and do pottery, I, I don't want my man to be doing pottery. Where's all your pottery friends? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but just to say like, you know, it's just, yeah. When you, yeah. It's aligning your, your yourself with who you want to be. And who, who knows? You, you know, the, the girl you might meet doing pottery might have a friend who's going to hook you up. But like with her hot brother. Exactly. Like sometimes it's all about where you place yourself. Yeah. And it's the same thing, you know, for me, it's like I am not going to date a guy who is not successful. So where do the successful people go? Mm -hmm. Well, chances are they're going to be giving back. They're going to be a foundation. So where should I insert myself? A foundation. Mm -hmm. That would be a good spot, you know, or. You know, traveling, you'll meet people who are also traveling who have the ability to do that. You know, mm -hmm. these are all places where you can instill yourself in order to be granted that opportunity. Yeah. But if you're not taking it and you're staying home and you said the world sucks, then you're not you're not open to anything. You're not open to meeting the love of your life. You're not open to new friends. You're not open to anything. 
And and I think that some people struggle with their because they're like, oh well, I'm an introvert. I don't like going out. I don't like trying new things. You but have it's to push like, yourself. You have to. And and I'm not saying go out and start a mariachi band. Like fucking do <laughs> little fun, things. Though. Yeah, fun though. <laughs> Do little things that are more aligned with who you are as a person, you know, even if you like to be more introverted, even if you like to stay home, take walks, go for a walk, you know, do a do a gym class that you like, do things that align with who you are. And I will say, if you are trying to beat that, you know, a guy in the club, your chances of meeting them are always on weekdays more than weekends because weekdays is like industry it's like people if you're going out on a tuesday or a wednesday it's because you can actually afford life (laughs) you know what i mean no one who all the people who can't afford life are just out on the weekends but like the people who are able to be out and do that are most likely not people who are out on saturdays yeah i mean look these are just facts um another thing that i wanted to say which i think is really interested interested (laughs) is really interesting it's fine we did pretty well today yeah is really interesting and i think a lot of people do this is when they're single they almost put these things they like limit themselves of like oh well i'm gonna do this when i'm in a relationship or they like stop themselves from doing things because they like plan to do it with their future partner or something like that and i feel like it's odd to live your life in that sense one example that i will say that I, i i see a lot of girls doing this i'm just gonna say is they'll say like, oh, I'm going to move out when I'm with a partner. Like, I'm going to move out, I'm being independent when I'm with a guy. Which, I I get it, everyone has their own thing. But if you're waiting, you're not going to move out even though that's what you want to do. You want to move out, you want to be independent, you want to live on your own. But you're going to wait until you have a boyfriend to move out. Now you're stopping your life, you're stopping yourself from moving forward in life because you're waiting for a guy to come out come around so that he could be the right one and then you guys can move out together don't wait for anyone i think you should never stop yourself from doing something just because you would prefer to do it with someone else Mm, i think you should never do that i'm sorry that's what i truly believe whether it's moving out whether it's traveling to certain places Mm -hmm. whether it's doing certain things you should never if it's oh i always want i always dreamt of taking a dance class with my boyfriend take a fucking dance class and meet a partner there you know like don't limit yourself and limit the things that you want to achieve because you're waiting for the right person to do it with oh, that's because it's so never going to come, you know, and you're going to realize you're going to move out and suddenly it's everything's going to align because you're doing what you want to mm-hmm. do, which is to move out. Yeah. To be independent. Don't wait for someone to do certain There's things. There's just so many perks about being single. And another one is traveling, guys. You know, you can travel when you want where you want and i think you know for both there's opportunity but especially being a girl and traveling single there's i I would say a lot more opportunity yeah would you agree yeah even if you're traveling and you're in a relationship but you're going alone you're limited when you are single and you are traveling it's really like you have this opportunity to kind of meet people and different perspectives Mm -hmm. and like you you might come back and be like life is literally so different wow like i remember when i recently got single and i traveled for three weeks and i came back i was like whoa the world is so big i can't believe i limited myself and thought like i can only see myself with one person and like life is only this way yeah so many ways of looking at life and so many different experiences to be made that like i feel like traveling really opens that like bug yeah (laughs) it's super true i'll always remember and i'm i've been a solo traveler i've done like a lot of trips by myself i mean not really but i've done several trips by myself um and it was really i traveled for the first time alone in a relationship when i had gone to la yeah and it was really difficult for me because although there was no like like i wasn't like I, I can't explain it. It's so difficult to meet people when you feel a little bit restricted mm-hmm. by your relationship. And it's not because if I was single, I was going to hook up. It's more about the fact that like already you're like, okay, I'm obviously not going to try to seek out friends that are male. Like, because mm-hmm. you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to look for girls. And then it's like, okay, you're going to hang out with girls. And then, okay, what do the girls want to do? And then are we going to hang out with guys? And then do I feel awkward? Cause we're all going to dinner with guys. Like you yeah. feel a lot of pressure and a lot of guilt for, for like doing certain things that you end up doing nothing because you don't want to put yourself in a position that might feel wrong. Mm-hmm. And which I get because 
you don't you wouldn't want to do that to your partner but then it also limits making new friends because yeah. you feel restricted to like where you could go which again i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying it's a different experience when you're in a relationship when you're traveling single you don't have to worry about whether your friend is a guy or a girl and if you're going to dinner with six guys and two girls or if there's you know what i mean if the ratio's it's, it's off literally like literally so true like i always felt like it's like oh my god okay we're going for dinner and it's like okay well there's two guys coming like i feel like is it weird is it bad you know and like, even if like especially if you're in a relationship and then what they pay your meal like are you supposed to feel awkward because like you know why am i getting this taken care of when technically you know how would my partner feel about exactly. that there's so many things you have to worry about when you're in a relationship and like i'm not gonna lie um i struggled with that so much especially you know, traveling. I remember going to Toronto once um, with my girlfriends and I was in a relationship and this was like peak, like it was coming to an end, our relationship. And I mean, all my four friends, cause we're sharing one hotel, <laughs> you know, hear all the bickering and all the argument at night. And like, sometimes I would like not purposely lie, but just maybe like skis around saying certain things just to av avoid the issue because you know, you're not doing anything wrong, but like why even go there? So you almost like you're in a way you're lying, but you're just, you feel like it's the right thing to do because it doesn't even mean anything. And yeah. like, I remember being in Toronto and like all my friends were single and they're like, well, we're going to, we were doing our own thing. And then it was like, oh, well, we're all going to a, to a backyard and there's a bunch of guys and like, we're drinking and stuff. And at that point I remember being like, you know, we're only going for an hour. Like, do I have to tell my partner I'm going and like, is he going to be worried? And I, I don't want him to think anything. So maybe I should just not say anything. Mm -hmm. And then I don't say anything. And then somebody posts something. And then it's worse. And then it's... And then somebody posts something. And then that post ended up getting to one of his Toronto friends, which got back to my boyfriend. And then it, and then it became all like, well, you're lying. And what do you have to hide? Why couldn't you just tell me? And it's like, I thought I was doing you a favor by just not telling you because it just didn't mean anything. But now it just looks like I'm shady. And now it looks like I do this all the time, which I don't. There's just so much that just, you know, it's very complicated. It's so complicated. And just like not having that stress and being single. Like, I'm sorry, ladies. Like, it's amazing. Oh, oh yeah. And it's like, it's amazing. And it's not like you're doing anything wrong. No, you're either. not doing anything wrong. It's just like you're going, OK, it's there we're three girls. There are three guys. Now does it look like we're on a, a triple date? Oh, it's like, now it's like, you know what I mean? Like you feel all this pressure that you feel like you have to think about, is this wrong? Is this this? Is this that? And I get it because you're thinking but about that's it through energy, your partner's mind. Energy, 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 energy. Yeah. Definitely traveling single is so much easier. It's so much more stress-free. You might just end up on a yacht in Ibiza. You know? And especially if you're traveling alone, it's so much easier. Because I remember when I was alone, I was really struggling to like feel confident making friends without giving them the wrong idea which is not something that you stress about when you're single because if they get the wrong idea huh, okay well on to the next and you don't have to worry about like oh no did i give them the wrong idea did i make them seem like you know yeah. what i mean like especially even because i know i've gotten in, in in a fight with my um i've gotten in a fight with mitko mitko if you're watching this um a long long time ago because i was in a relationship and he was single and he was going to la for his birthday okay and I was in a relationship and all the other friends were single and he really wanted it to be like a singles, you know, mm -hmm. trip. And, you know, for me, I was like, how selfish of him not to invite me when we're this close, you know, with him wanting it to just be single friends. And it's like, in a way, I kind of get it. Because if you're traveling with somebody who, let's say, for example, is not as down for everything as you or, you know, has a responsibility to a boyfriend and she's not going to, you know, go on the yacht, it suddenly starts to become a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, you could go on your own. But if you're if you're traveling and you're doing that so that you can have company and go with a girlfriend and then your girlfriend can't do certain things, you know, it makes sense why sometimes people just want to travel who are on the same wavelength, you know, because it ruins the vibe sometimes for everyone. Sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it's not what you're looking for and you just want a chill vacation and it works out. But that's why I think it's it's normal to kind of just like switch friend groups and kind of move around when you're single. You're you're finding you're finding your wave. Yeah. You know? I mean, I don't think anyone should be excluded from somebody. Yeah, no. Something just because they're in a relationship. That was my whole thing. I was yeah. so mad about that because I'm like, I'm the funnest. Like, I'm still going to come everywhere in the back of my head. Yes, I'd be probably having... I'd probably have to take the phone calls in the bathroom. But... You know? But, but I, I exactly. Like, 
still to this day, like, absolutely, there was no reason for me to get excluded. But in a way, I do understand yeah. that there is certain commitments you have being in a relationship that being single, you just don't have. Honestly, truthfully, there's a lot of things that I purposely excluded myself out yeah. of because I knew, even though I was allowed to do it, that I wasn't crossing any boundaries, I knew that it, I would find myself in circumstances where I either had to like, do something that I knew that, you know what I mean? Like be in certain places that might not be the best or like, I don't want to affect everyone else's experience. Well, like, so I'm just going to casually exclude myself from it. Not because I can't go, not because I'm planning to do something wrong, but just because I know that I'm not going to have the same experience that everyone else is going to have. And I don't want to affect anyone else's experience mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, there's different commitments that you have and when you're in a relationship you owe your partner respect you owe your partner loyalty there are certain things that you shouldn't do whether or not it's cheating or not i think there's certain environments you shouldn't put yourself in mm -hmm. just because it's disrespectful for your partner yeah and it's hard to explain that to somebody who's single and just wants to do something it's like oh just come on the yacht mm -hmm. it's fine and it's like yes technically it's fine but like i don't want to be in that position where i'm gonna come but then i feel guilty and i feel yeah. like oh you Story know what time. i mean i remember i was like maybe 20 years old and i was going to miami my parents had a place uh, a condo and i was going with three girlfriends now one of my girlfriends that i was going with was fully single the other two were in relationships and the way i saw it it was like okay you know what i'm the type of person where like if i want to do something regardless of if you're in a relationship or not i'm gonna do it and now that i had that extra friend who was on the same wavelength as me i was like beautiful if they want to go home and they think it's not right to you know go on a yacht or whatever then they can stay home but like i want to have the ability to still leave Yes, you feel guilty. Yes, you feel like, well, it's a chip. We're coming as four. Like, we should probably do everything together. But, like, that's another thing. When you're on a on a trip, vacation, you know, if somebody likes going for walks but you don't, like, you should always just do what you want to do. You mm -hmm. should never feel tied down or, like, oh, I'm not going to do something because my partner doesn't like to do it. Or you should always still do what you want to do. And uh, we went on a yacht. And they were, they were like, I don't, I really want to come. I just don't know if I could. Yeah. And it was just this back and forth. And I was like, guys, we're tanning at the beach right now. But the, but the, the the boat is leaving at three and i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna be on that boat i heard there was soccer players i'm going 20 years old i'm still the same girl and my other friend who i was with is like well, i'm not missing that so i was like okay do we go start getting ready and they're having fomo they're like well you know they're happy in their relationships but they still want to come so i'm like guys whatever you choose we're leaving in an hour like let's go mm -hmm. so then they ended up coming okay we get on the boat and then they're just like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I should be here. Like, I'm they're worried. And then I was like, well, guys, if you don't feel comfortable, get off the boat, <laughs> you know, and well, uh, a little difficult if you're already at sea. Well, absolutely. But in my head, it's like if you already put on your makeup, you're literally here. We took a freaking cab for 25 minutes to get here. Mm -hmm. You already decided you're on the boat. But then, you know, one person's getting shit from their boyfriend and all this stuff. And then as they're about to get off the boat because they're deciding, you know what? You know, and, and they'll have an impact on each other, right? Yeah. If it's like, if one's leaving, but then one girl in a relationship is staying, yo, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. 100%. But Brittany left and what, you choose to stay? You chose to stay? What's going on over here? 100%. You're unloyal and she's loyal. She's a good girlfriend and you're a bad one. <laughs> anyway, so it's, it's tag team. It's like the two singles, the two in a relationship. Anyway, as they're getting off the boat to be like, no, this is unacceptable. We can't go. The boat takes off. <laughs> and when you're going on a boat that's not yours you have no right you have who the fuck are you to start saying turn the boat around so they were like what do i do the boat took off i'm like guys ladies here's the vodka let's start drinking <laughs> you're on it there was a reason you had to stay on you came all the way here there was a reason you wanted to be here so now you're here just make the best of it deal with the shit later at this point because mm -hmm. regardless the boat's not turning around for you <laughs> no offense unless you like to swim anyway you know? after the whole experience they got back and they're like thank god the boat took off because i would be so mad if i missed out on this opportunity mm -hmm. you know and sometimes you know that boat taking off might be a boyfriend so being single is okay you'll be okay you'll be okay you'll be okay even if the boat takes off 100 <laughs> percent 
Your man will still be waiting for you. He might be mad, but he'll still be there. But that's the thing. Like when you're in a relationship, it's a tricky thing to explain mm-hmm. that like that invisible line of like, I know I'm not doing something. I know genuinely I'm not doing something wrong. I'm not looking to do something wrong. But I know that like you're not going to be happy with this, you know? So it's really tricky. And I think when you're single, you just don't need to worry about that. You could do whatever you want. You could go wherever you want. And to close it all off, it's like, that's another reason why I don't want to date a broke guy. Because a guy who has money and is secure won't be as affected by a girl being on a boat as a guy who isn't. And I'm sorry. Yes. I I, I've witnessed it. I've seen it. I think yes. any man is mad about. I a girl think that on a, boat. a man, a girl being on a boat gets them so mad for so many reasons. But I think one factor in there is absolutely the fact that they cannot provide the boat. Yeah. So it's that insecurity, and yeah. that's why I'm saying that there's so many problems when you're dating somebody who is not there. That that's why I just want to limit that one problem that probably comes with others. For you know that. So, so when are you getting a job at the yacht club? <laughs> well, if guys. If you're looking for a rich guy, then why are you not on a golf course, you know? Because I don't know how to fucking play golf. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Serve drinks. That's where all the rich dudes are at. Just saying. Put yourself in scenarios where you know you can meet your mans. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, while you're single, guys, like we <laughs> said, single is a long journey. Enjoy it. Don't spend your whole single time thinking about being in a relationship oh don't spend God. your whole single time setting yourself up to be in a relationship fuck that the first four steps just worry about yourself worry about yourself once you're ready and you come around and you're finally ready for a relationship then you can start worrying about like okay where do i want to be who do i want to be with mm-hmm. how can i put myself in places that i can find somebody that's better how can for alessia me? get a job asap <laughs> at a golf club because that's exactly where i want to go now and that's just added to the list you know maybe it's not a foundation i think it's actually serving drinks to the uh the rich men who are playing on the wednesday saturday sunday golf people not my style golf people not your style what does that even mean you don't even know anything about them they could be like anything i just a hobby doesn't you I hate when you do this. You like what? limit people. I don't like, limit people. I just, I can't ever imagine myself being. You just finished doing this whole episode being like, you have to be open. You have to be yeah, this. I'm not. I'm. It's the same thing <laughs> as you can have your preferences. I'm saying like, it's not my style of person. Somebody who golfs. I don't know. I can't. There's. It's a certain style of person. How, do, how does that make sense? How does that not make sense? How does what they do like on their free time judge who they are and what they do in their everyday i mean usually it correlates it's like i mean anybody could do anything but i'm saying like chances are your hobbies align with who you are like we're saying do stuff that aligns with who you are so somebody who's on a golf course aligns with the kind of person they are you know what i mean like what they do in life what they're they're they like i don't like golf don't see myself with somebody who likes golf I don't know. I don't agree with that. But you don't agree with me not liking somebody who who likes golf. I just think you're it's you're being preference. yeah, but you're being closed off. You have no idea who this person is, but they play golf, so you're not you're not into I'm, it. That's not what I'm saying. They can be someone completely but I, that's up not what I'm your saying. alley. I'm saying that people who it's not my style. It's like somebody's. It's like saying uh, I'm not into somebody that fucking I don't know is a hunter like. I would never be into somebody who's a hunter. It's just not my style of person. I could never get along with somebody who's a hunter for multiple reasons. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's like your know, hobbies agree, speak to who you are. I don't agree because I, I don't think being somebody who plays golf has anything to do with their life outside of it. Like, I think they can be somebody you would absolutely get along with. I don't think just because you're with somebody, you have to share all the same interests. So I disagree. But anyways, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't that deep. No, uh, I I'm know. not it's setting not, my my it's limit not, it's, on golfers. No, but I just think when you put that out there, and you're like, golf guy is not my style. You don't even know who the guy is. I just think, anyway, golfing that's all. is a lifestyle. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anyways, guys, you know, me and Veronica don't always agree, but that's totally fine. That's why we're two different people. Um, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode. Be single. Um, yeah. Enjoy your single time. And you know, we're making people become single after this episode. They go up to their boyfriends and they're like, I just like. I'm not where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think to a certain extent, though, like, I feel like sometimes when people are so focused on, like, single and, like, you should have this and you should have that, like, 
I know that there's also going to be a lot of people that are in relationships listening to this and you shouldn't, it shouldn't make you think differently about your relationship. If you're happy and you're going in the right direction, that's okay. And it's fine to be going and working towards Mm -hmm. what you want to be. Like, don't make this feel like, oh, you're losing so many opportunities because you're in a relationship. But if you are having a lot of doubts after watching this episode, then you have to maybe ask yourself why. Yeah. Like, are you feeling like you're unfulfilled? Is it some... Is what you feel like you're lacking something that you can have with your relationship? Because I think there's certain things that you might feel like, oh, like I'm missing out, but it's stuff that might be coming in the future. But then there's also certain things that you feel like you might be missing out on, but are not possible with the relationship and the life and the tunnel vision that you have right now. Like if your dream is to be, you know, something that's completely different than what you're in, then maybe, yeah, your FOMO and... You your, know what I'm laughing about? Yeah, I really want to know what you're <laughs> laughing about. Guys, if Veronica ends up with a golfer... I'm not going to end up... I can't end up with a golfer now. Now you're just not going to do it because you have something to prove. 100%. But guys, Veronica ends up with a golfer. Guys, the hottest, richest golfer could come up to me and I would have to say no. <laughs> Veronica, do it. Well, then. You know what? If it was the other way around, 100%. I met the love of my life, but he's a golfer. I'm not doing that. I'm not <laughs> to prove unless you're right. No. Fu- well, you Fuck said don't no. limit yourself. I was, I really, I honestly wasn't. It was like not that deep. It was like a, it was just like shooting the but shit. Now? But now, no, no. fuck golf, <laughs> fuck golfers, fuck hunters. I'm not going to golf course. You, you know, I don't want to hear shit about golf. I hate golf. I hate everyone that does golf. Like Veronica's gonna be the love of her life. He's gonna be a golfer, and she's literally gonna hide the relationship from me. <laughs> I can't. She's gonna be like, babe, look, I have this kind of like deal going on with Alessia. So like, put your golf clubs away. She's coming Put over. Put the golf clubs away. Put them away. Put the golf clubs away. <laughs> Put the motherfucking golf. You know what's the worst part? I'm trying to think now in my eyes, like what, like I would say, like I'm not dating. It's because I give think, me a few, and I'll. I tell think you. it's because I have a based off of people that I know that play yeah. golf, which is not everyone. Hundred percent. I think everyone. I I think for the most part, I know the style of people that play golf, and I know who they are, and I just go like. It's so not aligned with who I am, you know? It's because a lot of the times, it's not everyone, but golfers seem to kind of have this life where, like, they, they're a lot of the times they come from a rich family and they're just more, like, laid back and relaxed and chill and they can, like... You think? But golf is, like, so serious. Like, no, it's like, I don't know, message no, me when I'm on the golf course. But like, I'm saying, like... <sighs> Golf is such a rich sport, so a lot of people think, like, those kind of guys come from money or, like, inheritance. So, like, they they don't really have jobs and stuff. But that's not everyone. That's what I think of when I think of golf because there are a lot of that. You know what I think of when I think of golf? (laughs) I think of silence. I think of, like, boring (laughs) silence and, like, uh. Do you know how many just, fun guys will literally it be like align with me? You know how many fun guys will be like, bring the margaritas, like let's have fucking fun. Anyway, golf course are so. <laughs> and you know what's the worst part? I've never been on a golf course map. I've never played golf, guys. And it that's why it align with it. It's because you know what it is. Here, I'll t- I want a partner that I could do stuff with, and I have no problem. You want to play golf once in a while, but if you're a golfer, like a golfer, like you love golf, it's never gonna work. It's never gonna work with me because I don't want to go golfing every week. And it is what it is. And you know what? I will say the same thing about hunters. I can never date a hunter because I, I can't. If you're killing animals, sorry, get the fuck out. But you're eating them. So what's the difference? I don't want you to shoot them. <laughs> I don't want. Who's going to do the work for the you to eat them? hands that are fingering me to be the same ones on the trigger killing a fucking deer. Let those be other hands. Not my man's hands. <laughs> like it just, if you think about like. Okay, wait, give I me can't. a few. I want to see what I'm going to I'm going to be like, no, 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 no. Um, I mean, Hunter, yeah, that, that one's pretty. You agree? Yeah. Like, sorry. I don't we're feel like generalize a fucking there. Hunter. Um, can I? I'm going to say one that's a little mean. Wait, Veronica. <laughs> the Hunter one is the guy who said, what's your name? Alessia, Alessia. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, the OG story for the OG listeners that will know. Send me a piece of so I know it's he's Hunter. <laughs> I think he's like, <laughs> a couple times. It wouldn't slide with Yes, me. he showed me like his guns and stuff. <laughs> It wouldn't slide with me, I don't think. I Did can't. we say the story? <laughs> well, you know that we said that story. Yeah. 
but like for no one's probably gonna remember it even if they were og listeners we said it like three weeks ago no yeah never a lie we said it so recently wait what are you we talking? said the whole story we were crying never you're a lie i swear we to said god it just not on the podcast we were talking about it we i promise you i could promise trust me i edit like there's we never said that would be laughing i would tell you to make that as a trailer i'm pretty sure we spoke about it and then then and then we no we never spoke we we spoke about it we were laughing laughing okay, laughing well, we can't say it we can't throw it in now it's too good of a story to say at a fucking minute and well we have an to hour say it we, we, we have to we have to but we have to say it another time okay it's the funniest story you can't say it fucking now <laughs> thought i would never go for a hunter but i, I spoke to one. um you know what's another one a swimmer and it's not it's not for anything about the hobby it's the fact that i know it's like it's like it's the hat I'll with the goggles like i I'll, can be attracted i'll after. tell you why i'm I'm not gonna date a swimmer is because i wear tights not you well it's also like <laughs> okay i have one actually i have one i have one and this one is like i have one man a cyclist if you're wearing <laughs> my dad's like, a cyclist well i'm not grand for your dad there sorry if you're wearing so yeah insult my father sorry Sal <laughs> if you're wearing a a suit with the hat and the glasses and you I just I want someone who aligns with my hobbies <laughs> and my hobbies the only time that I'm aligned with a cyclist is when I'm about to hit him on the road okay <laughs> I I can't I'm not a, I can't I'm sorry I'm stereotyping yeah, I'm not gonna are. be down for a cyclist I'm gonna be honest I'm not down for a cyclist or hunter but if he has all of the other things i'm looking for listen and i gotta watch him put on the tights i'll just close my fucking eyes man <laughs> you gotta watch him put on the mitts the, the i just it's not for me <laughs> you have to have a lining you know what's one that's not for me hikers people who really enjoy hiking like it's something they gotta do every week and like they're very like they're people who love nature so much that like they just can't explain what nature does to them no well I'm going to bounce off of that. I have, I have a friend who loves nature so much. Safe to say, I never see her on the weekend. <laughs> well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, like I, you're going against what you're saying because your hobbies really do speak to who you are. And yeah. uh, well, you attacked me and you said well, that not all golfers are the same. Golfers, it's you're losing your boyfriend at 5 a.m. He's on the golf course and every trip has to be, is there a golf course near? And is there a hip and a hip? Hey, and uh, don't message me for eight hours. Okay, but what I'm saying is there's some golfers that know how to go out and still fucking have a good time. They don't yeah, have to 100%. golf every time they go on vacation. But yes, yes that's true. you're talking that's about true. retirement. But Veronica, we're 20. Can we can we live in 20? You know what? I'm going to bounce off of hiking. Somebody I could do. I could fucks with hiking. <laughs> not if you're like an every week hiker. Like, look, um, <laughs> camping. If you're like a ride or die camper, and don't get me wrong, I love fun. I love a good fire. I love a good tent. The adventure of knowing like you're going and by the tent and you're doing it and it's experience you're doing together once. It's fun. You know, there's no showers. There's all these things I'm saying. But like, it's fun. I don't mind. I'm, I, I don't mind. But if you're like a camper and you have like the suka, and you have the liquid for and like, suddenly you're thinking look. of like getting rid of your house because you're just going to get a trailer and live on a campsite. Like it's not, it's not a lot. You know what? <laughs> I think that was the best one. I think because if you're a hunter, like but you still come home and you put your guns in the garage, like we might still be able to work. But if your if your lifestyle is not a five star hotel, what I'm looking for, then no. I'll no. tell you what a hunter is. A hunter is you open your freezer and there's a deer staring at you, and that's not the life I'm trying to live. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not the lifestyle I'm trying to live. I think, yeah, those are all my. Off you think it, that's why it didn't work with my ex boyfriend because he owned the funeral business and I didn't feel like seeing dead people <laughs> in the freezer. <laughs> Okay, that got dark yeah. real soon. Okay, not sure if that's a hobby, but okay, sure. Okay, to the business that never dies. Let's uh, end this. Um, but yeah, guys, I guess all to say, uh, be single, don't date a golfer or a hunter or a camper. Somebody owns a funeral business. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this uh, You know what's a, a cool one, though, that I will say? Like a poker player. I feel like that's like a cool hobby. Yeah, until you lose your house. That's what I mean, Veronica. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pros and cons to all, guys. Pros and cons. Because you know what? That poker player, when he wins, you're going and buy six Chanel's. He doesn't give a fuck. When you lose. But when you lose. The car's getting towed. The car, the house. <laughs> when you're high, you're high. When you're low, you're fucking low. Crazy. 
Anyway, guys, cameras are dying. You know what it is. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. Catch us next week. We'll be back with all our Europe stories. Yes, yes. And we will start the episode by saying what this little thing we didn't say was. The hunter guy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so stay tuned for next week. The week after next week. Yeah. <laughs>